everyone and welcome to this practice. This is um, going to be a really good practice for um, if you're having any type of low back compression or any kind of low back pain. I know I've kind of been dealing with that a little bit lately so I've been going through poses every day to kind of help with that compression. So as always please do what feels good in your body and we will go ahead and get started. If you have blocks or a block, that would be really helpful. Of course, if you don't have any props at all, you can still do this practice. Um, so we're gonna get started here in a pigeon pose. And I like to use the block for this, at least at first, um, because I, it just gives a different sensation. So again, if you don't have the block, just do regular pigeon without the block, not a big deal. You can even use a pillow or something. Um, maybe more sturdy to kind of prop up your hip. So begin with the right leg forward. So my hip bone or my sit bone, I should say, is really what is on the block here. And my left hip is heavy. And I'm upright, my spine is flat. And I just want you to come into your breath here. Notice the sensations that you feel in this pose. Maybe this pose is speaking to you. Just notice whatever you can notice. Have the dialogue with your, your body, with the senses that you're, that you're experiencing right now. This is the beginning of the practice, the first pose, so it's not going to be deep. It's just going to just be a pose for right now. And of course, you can stay upright if this is the most comfortable, or you can begin to walk your hands out to hinge forward in your, in your hips. Maybe try to keep the spine flat here. If you want to make it all the way down to your elbows, you're welcome to do that as well. Just notice what the spine is doing. Notice if the spine is curving. And it's okay if it is, if this is the most comfortable position. But also notice the difference when your spine is flat and if it's rounded. Notice the difference in the stretch, the difference in the sensations that you feel. Notice the quality of your breath. Maybe cultivate and create this ujjayi breath. So inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose, constrict the back of your throat slightly, making audible ocean wave noises with the breath. for a couple more rounds. But go ahead and come up off of the block if you have one and transition into the other side. I like to bring my back knee in first and then scoot the block over to the other side if you have one. And then another option for this, if you don't like pigeon pose, um, this variation, you can always come onto your back and take pigeon on your back or like a, a supine figure four. So again, the, the block is underneath my left sit bone here. My right hip is heavy. My spine is lengthened and I'm upright. Just notice how this side is different. You may have one side that feels better than the other. And 
again if you feel like walking your hands forward. Trying to keep the spine lengthened, just hinging at the hips to get the stretch a little bit deeper. You can also come all the way down to your elbows if that's what you would like. And then of course, staying all the way up in pigeon or up onto the hands, more towards king pigeon is also always a good option as well. And if there's anything that you'd like to do here, like look from side to side, maybe look up and down. Stay connected to your breath though. Always stay connected to the breath. This is going to be a slower practice, so it'll be easier to stay connected to the breath. And we'll be here for a few more rounds of breath. ahead and bring that back knee forward and come up off of the block and then go ahead and come into a tabletop pose stack your shoulders over your wrists hips over knees tuck your toes if you'd like inhale melt your belly down lift your chin lift the tailbone up and then exhale round your spine up and back tuck your chin tuck your pelvis Inhale, melt the belly down, lift the chin, cow pose. Exhale, round your spine up and back for cat. We'll do this again, inhale, lower the belly, lift the chin, cow pose. Exhale, round the spine up and back for cat. Go ahead and make your way back into stillness, neutral spine. Keep your toes tucked and then come back onto your heels, come onto your knees, sit on your heels, stretch out the bottoms of the feet. And then if you'd like to clasp your hands behind your back, let your fingertips chase the floor. Maybe look up and down here. Maybe look left to right. Drop your ears from side to side. Again, staying with the breath. Good, from here, go ahead and untuck your toes. Come all the way back, plant your hands behind you. And then from here, lift your hips, squeeze your glutes. See if you feel that stretch in your quads and in your hip flexors. If this is not enough, you can always keep the glutes squeezed and then lower your butt down with your butt still engaged. See if that gives you a deeper stretch all the way up from the knees. If you need to even go further than that, you can even bring your elbows to blocks or all the way down to the floor. I will not go that far. This is enough for me. And go ahead and walk your way forward. Plant your hands, come back into tabletop. Step your hands one full palm print forward, spread your fingers wide, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Go ahead and pedal out the feet here in your downward dog. Take any movement that feels good here. So don't really worry right now about how your downward dog looks. Really feel 
the sensations, let it feel good in your body. And then when you decide to come back into stillness, feet are about hips distance apart. You can even walk your feet out to the edges of your mat and notice how that feels. Sometimes this feels good in my body, so I like to do it. But do what feels good. It's not important that your heels make it all the way to the mat, but go ahead and lengthen your tailbone up and back. And then grip the, the mat with your hands. Push up out of your hand and then let your head hang. So you're really trying to make this upside down V shape with the body. So my spine is flat here, it's not rounded. So I'm pressing my stomach towards my upper thighs here. And then maybe my gaze kind of looks between my knees or between my thighs. You can shake the head yes and no or from side to side. On the inhale, go ahead and walk your hands all the way back to your toes, come into a forward fold. Let your arms and your head hang. If you wanna grab opposite elbows, you can. You can clasp your hands behind your head. Go ahead and let the fingertips drop. Bend your knees and roll up one vertebra at a time. Let your arms and your head hang. Let gravity help you with the stretch here. Do this slowly. Take your time. There is no rush. And then on the inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Squeeze your glutes. Press your hips forward. Reach behind you. Come into a little back bend here. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, bring your palms down through your heart, slowly lower into a forward fold. Good, and then from here, go ahead and walk your hands all the way out long. Come into a plank pose. Go ahead and lower down onto your knees. Come back onto your hands and knees. Go ahead and flip your fingertips back towards your knees. So wrists still underneath my shoulders, hips right over my knees. Inhale, melt your belly, lift your chin, cow pose. Just like what we did before, but our fingertips are back. Of course, if this is not good in your feel, does not feel good in your wrist, then don't do it. Exhale, round the spine up and back. You can just do regular cat cows here if you need to. Inhale, melt the belly, lift the chin, cow. Exhale, round your spine up and back for cat. Inhale, melt your belly, lift your chin for cow. Exhale, round your spine. Lift the heart to the sky. Inhale, bring your spine to neutral. You can stay here or maybe step back into your high plank, keeping your fingertips pointed back behind you. Notice the heat. Maybe you're shaking a little bit. I know I am. Notice the heat building up in your body. Good. Go ahead and lower your knees down. Bring your fingertips forward. Go ahead and sit back onto your butt. Make sure you have a block handy here. And we're going to come up into a wide-legged, seated wide-legged forward fold. Now, if you have a block, you can try bringing your hips up onto the block for this. Sometimes I like to do that. Just lengthens my spine a little bit more, especially if you feel like your spine is curving when you're sitting on the ground. So get nice and long here. Try to widen your legs as, as um, much as they'll go. Point your toes up to the sky. And then you can walk forward. Maybe bring the elbows down to the ground if that's, if that's in your practice, if that is available to you. 
And if this um, block is not serving you, you can always, you know, set it to the side, not use it. This practice is about doing what feels good in your body. So I am cueing poses and what I'm cueing may not be right for you in the moment and that is okay. The practice of yoga is noticing what your body does need. Stay with that Ujjayi breath. We'll be here for a few more rounds here. Good. Inhale. Make your way up. Lengthen your spine. Reach the arms up to the sky. And then exhale. Side bend over to your right. And you can reach over your head like this, the bicep over the ear, maybe look up and do a side bend like that. Or if you want to point your heart towards your knee and bend over the knee, whichever one feels most com comfortable to you will do. Inhale, reach both arms up, lengthen out the spine, and then exhale, side bend to your left. And again, biceps over the ear, maybe look over or underneath the arm, or point the heart down towards the knee. Staying with that breath, sending the breath to the area of your body where you feel the sensation, where you feel the stretch. Inhale, lengthen both arms up to the sky, get nice and long. Bring your palms down through your heart. Plant the hands, go ahead and as gracefully as possible, you can come up off the block if you are using one and then come into a seat. Lengthen your left leg out long, actually bend the left leg, and then bring the right ankle onto the left knee, right above the knee. Come into this seated figure four. Maybe you plant your hands behind you and then press your chest towards your shin bone. And if this is enough for you, you can stay here. If you want a little bit more, you can keep the left hand planted and then press on that right knee. Just press forward, give it a little bit of pressure. Might feel a little bit more of a stretch here. Notice the sensations here in this pose. Similar to pigeon, but not quite the same. It's stretching different muscles. So maybe notice where the muscles or what muscles are being stretched or what sensations you feel in this pose. Good, go ahead and lengthen the left leg out long this time. Plant your right foot down next to the left knee. Now you're welcome to keep this bottom leg straight if you would like, or you can bend it and then have that foot next to your right hip. It's up to you. 
You're going to inhale, lengthen the left arm up to the sky, get length in the spine, plant the right hand behind you, and then exhale, twist to your right, hook the left elbow on the outside of the right knee. And every time you inhale here, you lengthen the spine, and every time you exhale, you twist a little bit deeper. And the more you press this elbow into the knee, you might feel a little bit of a stretch in your left shoulder blade, or behind the shoulder blade, I should say. Inhale, make your way forward. Go ahead and switch legs, but keep the right knee bent this time and then bring the left ankle onto the leg for a figure four. Again, you can have your hands behind you, root them into the ground, and then press your um, chest to your shin bone. And this could be enough for you. Maybe you don't come this far, but that's okay, you get the idea. Go as far as you can go. If you need to go farther, you can always put pressure onto the left knee, kind of um, press it forward. And breathe. Maybe notice how this side is different than the other side. more rounds of breath here. Stay with that ujjayi breath that you cultivated at the beginning of practice. And go ahead and extend the right leg out long. Plant the left foot next to the right knee. Option to keep the, leg, the right leg straight or bend it. Inhale, lengthen the right arm up and then exhale, twist to your left. Hook the right elbow on the outside of the left knee. And my left hand is underneath my left shoulder, just to keep me, just to keep my spine more lengthened here. So again, every time you inhale, you're lengthening a little bit more. Every time you exhale, you're twisting a little bit deeper, but you know how far to twist here, so it shouldn't be painful. And the more you press this right elbow into the knee, the more you might feel that stretch now in the right shoulder blade or behind the right shoulder blade. Notice the quality of your breath here. Since you're twisting, you, not, you may not be able to get as deep breaths as you were before, but then where can you find space to breathe? Maybe you can breathe more into your chest. Good. Inhale. Go ahead and make your way back to your center. Go ahead and scoot to the middle of your mat. Go ahead and grab your block. Plant your feet. Bend your knees. Press the block between your hands and slowly lower all the way down to the count of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, last one. Place the block between your knees. Scoot your heels up by your glutes. Scoot your shoulders down. And then on the inhale, lift up your hips. Squeeze the block between your thighs. I'm going to switch the block to the medium width and then lift up. So the medium width, go ahead and press your hands down. If you want to shimmy your shoulders together and um, clasp your hands underneath your sacrum, you're welcome to do that. If you, that feels good. We're going to hold for 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Go ahead and lower the hips all the way down. Go ahead and switch the block to its widest um, setting here. Again, if you don't have the block, just keep your feet hips distance, or you can squeeze like a couple of pillows depending on how wide they are between your legs. So um, the block is on the widest setting here, and then I'm gonna lift up, squeeze that block between your thighs, and then tuck the pelvis so that your, your hips tuck to your low ribs, and hold here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Go ahead and lower all the way down, grab the block, lift the hips one more time, slide the block underneath your sacrum, and then extend the legs out long first. You may have to kind of adjust the block a little bit to make it comfortable underneath your hips. Get nice and long here. Go ahead and lift your right knee into your chest, extend the left leg out long, and then you can bring that right knee over to the side. So I keep the left hip down. Sometimes I like to put my left hand on my left hip and kind of pull my hip away from my knee. Go ahead and slowly switch sides here. Extend the right leg, bring the left knee into your chest. You can stay here or bring the knee out to the left side. Maybe pull that right hip away from your left knee. Extend the right toes out long as far as you can, like you're going to touch the wall, and then relax the foot down to the ground. Good. Go ahead and bring both knees into your chest and extend your legs straight up to the sky. Supported shoulder stance. You can roll out the ankles here if you'd like. If you want to take this further and come up into full shoulder stand or into plow pose, if that's in your practice, you can, you can go for that. But of course, you don't have to do that. You can just stay in this nice modified inversion. slowly bend your knees plant your feet lift your hips set the block off to the side go ahead and hug both knees into your chest and grab for the outsides of your feet for happy baby this will be the last pose of course if there is another pose that your body is calling for in the moment you're welcome to go there and then Whenever you're ready, no rush of course, make your way into your Shavasana. You can use a block underneath your hips and do Shavasana in a supported bridge pose if you'd like. If you want more of a heart opener, you can place it between your shoulder blades. You can come into Supta Baddha Konasana with the legs. stillness here. Let your body relax. Let your body be heavy. And this is where I will leave you. Of course, you can stay in this pose for as long as you would like. As always, thank you for joining me 
for this practice, sharing your space and your energy with me on the mat. The light in me sees and honors the light inside of you. Namaste.